All right, so bless Sabbath, everyone. Yes, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless us all. All praises and thanks. Um, so let's go back to Exodus 32. Lord willing, we're going to finish with the book of Exodus 32. Last Sabbath, we left off in Exodus 32. And um, we're on verse 25. So we should be able to finish this chapter. And remember, this, this history that we're reading here was something that the Apostle Paul of the Lord was preaching to our people that this is something that we don't want to do in our life in Christ, in our walk in Christ, in this journey in Christ to the end, to the day we die, or the Lord come at, our, at his second appearing and we're alive. You know, this is something that we don't want to give ourselves into. What is that? Idolatry. So, let's read Exodus 32 and verse 27. Uh, 25, I'm sorry. Exodus chapter 32, verse 25. So it says, And when Moses saw the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked, unto their shame among their enemies so when we read earlier in the verses we know that Aaron made the calf that Israel bowed down worship sacrificed unto and then served in drunkenness music fornication so when that went down Israel sinned a great sin so that's the nakedness it was is they were there was this they were exposed because of sin because of their sin because it said for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among what the enemies of Israel that would hear of what happened here and we would look make the most high look bad We don't want to represent the Most High in the wrong way. We're for our enemies. That's, that, that's a reproach unto us. So then it says, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? So Moses stood up at the gate. And what did he say? Who is on the Lord's side? Who's on the most, who, who fears the most high? Who's about fearing and obeying, being obedient to the most high? Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi, see, the tribe of Levi, gathered themselves together unto him. So they stood out among the people. And as uh, the Levites, which were one of the sons of, of Jacob, Levi, they came before Moses. Who's on the Lord's side? So obviously there's an element of what? People that's on the Lord's side and people that's not on the Lord's side. In um, Deuteronomy 9, right? Uh, let's get this point. Most I call this a rebellion. So although Israel committed this sin, you know, Aaron was very chief in this matter, very prominent in this sin because he made the calf where he was supposed to withstand the evil congregation and their rebellion. Let's go to Deuteronomy 9, right? I think we read this but let's go back to it. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 9. What's that? Verse 21. Um... Uh, 
yeah, that's part of it. I took your sin. Um, if I remember correctly, it spoke about this being a rebellion. That's the part I'm looking for. So it's somewhere within these verses. Um, let me see. So um, I'm not sure exactly what verse it is. But let's read this, though, since we're here, right? Deuteronomy 9 and verse and 7. Deuteronomy 30, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 9 and 7. Remember and forget not how that thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. So we in Deuteronomy 9 and 7. From the day that thou de didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. <laughs> so, since the Most High brought Israel out of Egypt, at this point here in Deuteronomy, this is towards the end of the 40 years, and Israel still being rebellious against the Most High. That's why James said, he quoted um, Genesis 6 and Genesis 8. Know ye not that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Meaning the spirit that's in man is evil continually. So, you know, you would think that, because, you know, we would learn our lesson sooner or later as a people. But obviously, <laughs> you know, Moses is like, look. And since y'all came out of Egypt until you came onto this place. So this is toward the end of the 40 years in the wilderness and they still rebellious. Also, in Horeb, you provoked the Lord to wrath so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. So that's when Israel made the calf. It was Moses that made the calf. And Israel worshipped it committed idolatry verse 9 when I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you so what are these two tables of stone what are the what are the tables of stone even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you that's the two tables of stone wherein were written the ten commandments then I abode in the I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. Just like who? Christ. Christ, right? So when we read about the prophet like on the Moses, this is another example that you can draw from when we try to bring out that point about the prophet like unto Moses. Christ fasted for forty days, forty nights. Moses fasted for forty days, forty nights. See? So Moses didn't eat bread nor drink water. So that's that was for forty days, man. And most I was dealing with Moses in the mount for forty days for he didn't eat or drink. So who was his life source? The one feeding him with the most high, the one exactly brother that was feeding him. You know, instruction, wisdom, prophecy, see? So I say and the Lord delivered unto me the two tables of stone written with the finger of God. So the Ten Commandments were written with the finger of God. That's letting us know who's the author of the Ten Commandments, the Most High. So we, for example, are trying to teach a brother or sister that we're not supposed to steal. But they, can they say, well, that's the law of Moses. We don't have to follow that. No, that's the law of the Most High. But we teach Israel thou shalt not come into adultery. And they say, well, that's the law of Moses. We don't have to keep that. That's not the law of Moses. That's the, the law of God. And if Moses taught that law, so did the prophet like honor Moses, Jesus Christ. When we teach Israel about the Sabbath day, people may ask us questions. Hey, you know, I don't notice, you know, you try to avoid work on the Sabbath. You try not to... 
um, take overtime on the Sabbath as well, and you know, you're not. Why is that? Well, when we read in the Ten Commandments that God spoke, that were written with His finger upon two tables of stone that He gave to Moses to teach Israel. One of those commandments is we we're always to keep in remembrance the seven day Sabbath. Well, that's but ain't that the law of Moses? It was written with the finger of God. Think about that, <laughs> brother, or sister, whoever you trying to share this with, right? But the Sabbath, that's the law, that's the law of Moses. We don't have to keep it was written with the finger of God. Most I made a covenant with us. We had to keep these commandments. So it says, And on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you out of the midst of the fire in the day of the what? Assembly. So what was the assembly? The assembly of Israel before Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, right? And then what? The Most High spoke the Ten Commandments. Those very same commandments after he spoke them, when Moses was in the mouth for 40 days, he wrote them upon two tables of stone and gave them to Moses. Imagine that. You got in your hands uh, two tables of stone and the Most High's commandments are written on them by his finger. That's powerful, man. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days of 40 days that the Lord gave me two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly. So this kind of recap of what we read in Exodus 32, right? Because that's what actually, that's what Moses is doing here. He's recapping what happened when Israel came out of Egypt, right? About 40 years later, he bringing it out. Why? Because he just said, remember. Remember. What about now in Christ? We got to what? Remember this history. So we going in this. Well, that's Exodus. We don't have... What, what are we talking about? This is something that we have to keep in remembrance. So it's something to teach us to be on guard against in our walk in Christ. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. For that people which thou brought us forth out of, out of Egypt have what? Corrupted themselves. And are quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. That's the golden calf. Didn't the Most High said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me? Did he not say, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, any likeness of anything on earth beneath the heavens? When he gave us that commandment, we quickly turned aside from that. So what does that show you as a people? Our rebelliousness. That we hear the word, but in instances where we give place to the lust of the flesh, we're not what doers. That's 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 what we man, we're people, we're hearers, but not doers of the word. Because if we truly hear, we would be faithful and obedient. That's what Moses meant by when he said, Hear, O Israel, meaning hear with attention and obedience. The Lord our God is one. Lord. Hear with attention and so when Moses spoke, we would have hear, right? But not just here to just, oh, wow, that's cool. Like, you know, that's deep. Or, oh, yeah, let me write that down. And Okay. Nah, we, we got to what? Take it to heart. Be faithful, obedient, tremble at the word. Like when the scriptures go out, even now, we're supposed to be what? Trembling. Hearing. Walking in it. So... Deuteronomy 9 and 12. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly, <laughs> quick, because they cutting up from hence. For that people which thou brought forth out of, uh, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned aside out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff necked people. We're, we're people that will hear the word and we'll say all praises, you know, amen. <laughs> I'll give you names. Hold this, right? Go to Joshua 24. Get, get, get an example of that. Joshua 24. I'm 
going to get kind of right to the point. Um, Joshua 24 and 19. And, and Joshua said unto the people, Joshua 24, 19. Now, this is when Israel, tribe by tribe, got their land by inheritance, right? So we already in the promised land. We already in the land flung with milk and honey. And this is what Joshua said to our people. And Joshua said unto the people, you cannot serve the Lord. How are he telling people that they can't serve the Lord? Let's find out. For he is a holy God. Meaning the Most High is, is a righteous, holy God. So we have to be godly. He is a what? So he demands love that's what? Exclusive to him. Not, well, I love the Most High and, right, the world. Friendship with the world is what with God? Enmity, hatred. Okay. This is Joshua saying the same thing James said in the epistles of, of the brother James. Has anything changed? And these brothers in the book of James were we supposed to be in Christ and he's saying these things. So are these scriptures ever out of time and place? Nah. We needed to be reminded of the good and the bad. So it says so this is not an exhortation to bring anyone down. Joshua ain't trying to bring the people the spirits the people's spirits down. But when the Holy Spirit speaks, one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to reprove the world of sin. We see that in Christ in the flesh and the form of the comforter. Through his apostles in the book of Acts. Christ said, The world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testified that the works there are of a what? Evil. That's what Joshua's doing. Testifying that the works of Israel is evil when it's, their works don't line up with being faithful and obedient to the Most High. He will, he will not forgive your transgressions nor your what? Sins. Because we reap what we sow. So don't tempt them. That's, the, that's what the, the point of Joshua is. Don't try to power the Most High. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, the nation of Israel today, what's manifest? That is a people we have forsaken God. We have forsaken him. And we're serving strange gods. Breaking the Sabbath, that's serving a strange God. Christmas, which, you know, you would think, well, all right, well, at least that's a Christian holiday. <laughs> When you, you look up the roots and origin of it and, and go in the scriptures, man, that ain't got nothing to do with Christ. That's idolatry. Easter, idolatry. So, all the works, you know, the, the, the fornication, the adultery, the idolatry, the, the hatred, the, the bearing false witness, the covetousness that's in this world, dishonoring father and mother, murder, adultery. Breaking the Sabbath, idolatry, serving other gods, I'm my own God, breaking the dietary laws. When we're doing those things, that's not worshiping gods. We're, we're worshiping strange gods, gods of other nations or ourself. That's the strange God, ourself. So then it says, For if you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you what? So can people say, you threatening us, Joshua? Why you got to preach a message where people got to get hurt? Because Israel, when we read in Isaiah 30, they want to hear what? Smooth things. Tell us that we can fulfill our lust and still serve the Most High. That's what Israel wanted. That's the kind of doctrines they want to hear. When that's they, meaning Israel, that's carnal like that. But Israel in the spirit, they want to hear this because they know that man, when a man speaks like that, that's a man of God right there. A man of God is not one that when sin is present and he turned a blind eye to it and not correct it. 
that's not a man of God. A man of God is like Joshua here. He see what's happening in Israel. This is what well, is deeper than him. The Holy Spirit is showing him this. Joshua's a man, just like you and I, but this brother is in the spirit. There's a reason why he's speaking the way he does. Most I said it earlier, 40 years earlier, this man hath another spirit on him. He hath wholly followed me. This brother was one of two brothers that came out of Egypt that was a slave that made it to the promised land. That was of the age 20 and up. Think about that. So would this be the type of brother that we would like, be quiet, listen. <laughs> yeah. Because this is a man that's speaking through what? Wisdom through what? Experience. And not the experience of sinning, the experience of <clears throat> being faithful and diligent to the Most High. So like, I could picture like being there, like making sure everybody in your house is listening, right? <laughs> you listening? You listening? You listening? You over there, yeah, you listening? Do you understand who's speaking here? Listen. Take heed. Pay attention. This ain't about amen, amen, and all praise, all praises. Not accompanied with what? The faith. And the people said unto him, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. See? We quick to say that. No. We're going to serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. So we are people that be quick to what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, scripture, yeah. Yeah, we all, yeah. Yeah, Moshe said, yeah, 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 but yeah. Don't be so hasty. Listen to what he's saying. Don't be so rash. Be like, man, I pray to the Lord that I humble myself in the time of temptation and trials so that I don't give in to the lust of the flesh. And forsake God. See, that's more of a, a, a right response. Now, yeah, 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 yeah. We're witnesses. I mean, we are supposed to say we are witnesses, but we got to be in the right spirit when we say that. Just that we got to be in the right spirit when we give, when we pray, fast, and do alms. Are we supposed to do these things? Yes. But is there a way of doing these things where it's not right in the eyes of God? Yes. So is this. All praises. You know, all the people on the internet. Like, like, heart. <laughs> we are witnesses. That's what we're saying, right? Okay. What does Joshua say? Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you. How many times do we know when we, according to what we've read in the past in this chapter, did he say this? It's like at least the third, fourth time. <laughs> They could have been like, why are you asking us over and over? Well, the same way the Lord asked Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Peter, do you love me? Peter's like, Lord, you know my heart. You, you know the hearts of men. Why do you keep asking me, you know, do I love you? Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, feed my sheep. Do you love me? <laughs> What's Joshua doing? Feeding the sheep. Not what they want to hear, what they need to hear. Knowing that Israel got that worldliness in it, he could have justified it, glossed it over, sugarcoated it. Came with a doctrine that, no, that's keeping the commandments. No, it's not. Not when we mix in worldliness and serving God. Christ said no man can serve two masters. So who is our master? Christ. He's the one that teaches us how to worship God in spirit and truth. So, so the, the most high in Christ can't be our God, right? Christ can't be our master, teacher. And we have, we want to be worldly. That's what 
Joshua is saying in this chapter. We already in the land of promise. What are we doing with other gods? What are we doing? Tempting God. That's what we're doing. What are the gods of Egypt doing amongst the people that Joshua is addressing? <laughs> what are the gods of the Canaanites in the land who we just obtained doing amongst us? So we're supposed to be destroying and burning these images? Ew. All right, let's move on. Next house, destroy it. Yeah, who did we doing? <laughs> what are the gods that our fathers, Abraham's father and them, sir, doing? Ancient Babylonian gods. Where, by the way, comes Christmas. <laughs> Easter. Breaking the Sabbath. Celebrating ourselves. It's my birthday. Give me presents. Here's my cake. And I don't like the gifts that was in my okay. Those are ancient Babylonian gods. So when you read earlier in the chapter, Joshua told us to put away the gods which your other which your father served on the other side of the flood. The flood meaning the Euphrates River going all the way back to ancient Mesopotamia. Abraham. Abraham's father was an idol worshiper. So, Mosai called him out of that world and brought him eventually to the promised land. And he died in the promised land. He died in the faith of Christ. The gospel was preached to Abraham. That, that man was on point. <laughs> Abraham was, man, that man was on point, man. He, he diligently followed the Lord. So the Most High blessed that man. Called him his friend. Whew. We can say God is my friend. Yet yeah, is God saying that about us? <laughs> so he is called the friend of God. So now it says verse 23 now therefore put away he said the strange gods which are among you incline your heart unto the Lord to, unto the Lord God of Israel why say worship the God of Israel because the gods of Egypt the Canaanites and the ancient Babylonians the Mesopotamians was among them although the Most High took Israel out of Egypt <laughs> you know Egypt didn't leave Israel it's the same thing with us in this world we're supposed to be putting off and it's a process lifetime it's not going to happen we in this learning this faith six months and we nah, but, you know and all of a sudden after this, there's no period of time you in this faith and we put it all off there's layers to this there's levels to this that we are supposed to be abounding in the fruits of the spirit simultaneously purging the works of the flesh it's a lifetime process but we're on the right track as long as we have that frame of mind that Joshua had because he says for me and my house we shall serve the Lord say that earlier in the verses because when he's saying in verse 23 now therefore put away said he the strange gods which are among you he said that in verse um, starting at verse 14 let's read that real quick same chapter Joshua 24 verse 14 now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in what that's what Christ taught worship him in what spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to what worship him but it wouldn't be this Joshua that would truly bring us there would be Joshua or Jesus, the son of Joseph and Mary, the son of God. That's why the Lord said the hour is coming now is. So, so the Lord and Joshua, they both have the same name, same meaning of, of the, the meaning, the name means the same. 
Savior. The Most High saves. See? Savior. So then it says, And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. That's cutting. Is that judging? <laughs> well, it is judging. It's, it's, it's righteous discernment and, and, and judging in the sense that when we read the next book after Joshua, what's it called? Judge. The book, no, the book of Judges. Right, right, Judges. The book of Judges. So what were they doing? Judging Israel. <laughs> but they had to judge righteous judgment according to the scriptures, according to the Holy Spirit's giving them the discernment. Tell us after Joshua's death that Israel, you know, didn't fare very well. So, most, then Mosai had to punish Israel, raise up judges. And these judges came with the correction. So, Joshua is judging righteous judgment. He's discerning what's happening, speaking accordingly, and coming with it. And you have a choice too. It says choose you. Yeah, this choose this day. Yeah, you make a choice. Choose you who you're going to serve. Make that choice. Because <clears throat> obviously, up to this point, they're still what? Double-minded. Right? If, if we serve in the great spirit, the most high, right? The true living God, but we got the gods of the other nations among us. We're double-minded. We have to make a choice. So we all have that to make that choice. Anything that we covet is idolatry. Anything that we desire that's against the scriptures, we have to look at that as a form of idolatry. Anything that we desire that gets in, in that desire to fulfill those desires and lusts that has us turning to the right or to the left or what's written in the scriptures, we, we should be able to discern that that's idolatry. I'm, that's serving another God. See, when we start to look at things like that, those kind of situations like that, then we'll be able to make the judgments that we need to make. So this is uh, cold what's being said here. So in, uh, uh, let's continue in Joshua 24. I lost it for a second here. Oh, okay, here we go. Joshua 24. So then it says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we shall what? We're going to serve the Lord. Me and my house, me and my wife, my children, my household. Joshua had servants, they what? And, and, and you know, men serving, maid servants, they what? Serving the Most High. Because he has a responsibility over what goes on in his house, ultimately. Can he go in another man's house and rule it? That's that man's house. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. That's what we said. What we do is a different thing. Now check this out. For the Lord, our God... He it is that brought us up, brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, which did these great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way where we went and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwell in the land. Therefore we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. So Sounds good, right? We say we say it was right, but check check Joshua out here. And Joshua said unto the people, "You cannot serve the Lord." <laughs> Understand the context. He's not saying you can't serve the Most High. He's saying well, you can't serve the Most High in this state, for He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods. Then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after they have done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. 
And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Again, Joshua, verse 23. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord your God. You judging us, brother. Most I said judge. Christ said judge. Righteous judgment. Righteous discernment. So when you look at the men of God in these holy scriptures, this is how they dealt with when it came to sin. Unlike Israel that liked the false prophets that spoke smooth things. The deceit of their heart. To speak a doctrine that caters to their lust. To fulfill their lust to be worldly and serve the most high. Can't do that. That's what Joshua's saying. Verse 24. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God we, we, will, we, will we serve. His voice will we obey. And Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and set them a statue and an ordinance where? Ain't that the same place where the woman of Samaria and the Lord had that conversation in John 3? So this is what she meant by our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they worshipped the Lord in Samaria because that's where Shechem is in Samaria. And even Israel. So want to get a point here um, <clears throat> so uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy 9 Deuteronomy 9 so you know we're saying the right things we're agreeing verbally but what did Joshua say? You gotta climb your what? Heart. Ain't that what Christ taught? See, all the prophets spoke in that same manner when it came to Israel in the midst of their sin. That correction. So now, uh, Deuteronomy 9. Uh, we left off at verse 13. 13? Okay. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, behold, it is a stephanic people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them, and blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than what? They. So the Most High could have still fulfilled his promise, you know, of Abraham's descendants getting the land of Israel through who? Through Moses. And destroy the people, to destroy Israel that came out of Egypt. So what happened here? This is now Moses being, you know, who he is. And it says, so I turn, okay, then when you read, he, he prayed for Israel. We read in Exodus 32. So now he coming down from the mount, verse 15. So I turned and came down from the mount. The mount that the mount burned with what? Fire. So when they said we would not, what has become of Moses? What are you talking about? The mountain is burning with fire. Should we not be what? In fear. You would think Israel's. That's like I'm not gonna act up. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not going to act up. We know, you know, Israel think about making a cat. Like, oh, just look at the mount, man. We were at the bottom of the mount. That's a total disregard against the Most High. So, the, so it said, and, and the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my, what? Two hands. So in one hand and the other here, the the two tables of stone, and what was written upon these two tables of stone? The Ten Commandments. And they were written with whose finger? Moses or God's? God's, the Most High. Abba, the Father, right? So then it says, 
And I looked, and behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made you a molten calf. Ye had turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord hath commanded you. And I took the two tables, and cast them out of my two hands, and break them before your eyes, because we broke the covenant. That's what that means. And I fell down. See? Before the Lord, as at the first. Forty days, forty nights. So we didn't get that part yet. But it says, I did neither I did I did neither eat nor drink water because of all your sins which ye had sinned and doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to what? Anger. I mean tempting the most high. So then Moses had to go back into the mount for 40 days. After he was there already 40 days. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me uh, at that time. Okay, you know what? Verse 18. But I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days, 40 nights. So, right, okay. So a after, after the 40 days, he went into the mount back. And then it says, um, so I, what verse I just read? Sorry about that. Um, 18. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first um, 40 days and 40 nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink, eat bread nor drink water because of all your sins which you sinned and doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wrought with you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. Okay, so remember the Most High hearkened unto him when he was uh, in the mount before he came down with the Ten Commandments and, and then also when he went back into the mountain. So then it says, And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. See? The Most High was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And what did Moses, what did Moses do? And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. See? So Moses prayed for Aaron. So that's what we're supposed to do one for another. Pray for one another. Yeah, the man sinned. Should we look for the Most High to destroy him? Or should we pray for the brother? Pray for the brother. Not, ah, he's wicked. And most I gonna get him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we watching, right? Something little happened to him. I see, that's the most high. That's, that's, that's not right, man. Moses prayed, right? Moses, Moses prayed for the brother. So let's read that again. The Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him, but I prayed for Aaron also at this time. So that was like the, the, the first time when he was in the mountain. Because then it says, And I took your sin, the calf which you had made, and burned it with fire, and stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount. And at Tabara, okay, then that's, that's going into other examples. So um, now let's go back to Exodus 32. So Moses is going into the different rebellions after that. Just like Paul did in 1 Corinthians 10. That's our history. Whether it was good or bad, that was our history. <laughs> We should learn from it. Learn from our history. Because there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. So now when we go back to Exodus 32. And verse 26 it says. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. 
See, so who's on the Lord's side? Levi stood up. We on the Lord's side, right? Okay. And he said unto them, Moses said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his what? Sword by his what? Side. Remember when Peter drew out his sword? When the men came to apprehend Christ and he cut that guy's ear off? What do you do with a sword? Cut. Cut. Right? So... <laughs> He said, who's on the Lord's side? The Levi stood up and said, we on the Lord's side. All right, pick up your swords and put them by your side. And go in and out from gate to gate. Throughout the what? Camp. Because you had all the tribes of Israel. Gate to gate. Throughout the whole camp. And slay every man his brother. Every man his companion. And every man his what? Neighbor. Because remember that 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 element of that worldliness, even though this sin went down, it's still there. That spirit is there among them. So Bosai says, smite the scorner and contention will cease. So there is a spirit behind what went down. And that spirit has not gone away. There's a spirit behind what went down. Even though they, they were, you know, Israel was, uh, like they said, when Moses saw the people were naked. So as soon as Moses came down from the mount, as if he saw a bunch of naked people. Because it said, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among the enemies. As soon as Moses, oh my, our enemies. So they weren't, it wasn't about them being naked. Clothes-wise, it was more about what? Their sin. So, man, Moses came down and he was like, wow. Yeah, I know the most I told me. I know the most I told me. But wow, I see it with my own eyes. He was like, Aaron, what did these people do unto you? That you have promoted such a great sin. Like, what did they do to you, man? How did you let these people get to you? What is? I can't believe what I'm seeing. So, what was told to these Levites? Slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his what? Neighbor. That's cold. So beginning with your own family, this judgment had to be executed. Because what? Israel committed this sin, and that's, that spirit was still there. That spirit, how we know it? Joshua 24, put away the gods of what? Egypt. So even though Israel was exposed for their sin, a lot of Israel still had that spirit in them. So this rebelliousness had to be dealt with. Slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. In the spiritual sense, this is the makeup we're to have with our family that we're not to let what anyone come between us and serving the Lord, including ourselves. <laughs> and the children of it, and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about three thousand men. And they began with what? If you go to Deuteronomy 33 real quick. Their own family. You know, they could be, hey, Moses, come on. They're taking this too far, brother. This is my brother. They, they didn't have that mind. That's why Christ said, he that loveth father, mother, brother, sister, son-in-law, daughter-in-law more than me, then we really don't have what it takes <coughs> to serve the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. So, 
Deuteronomy 33, and um, we'll read from verse 8, right? So we understand what tribe he's talking about. Deuteronomy 33 and 8. And of Levi, see, it's the tribe of Levi. Remember the Lord, Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? I said, the Levi stood up, right? And Moses said, all right, put every man his sword by his side. And go gate to gate throughout the camp and slay everyone. His brothers, companions, so on and so forth, right? Okay, and of Levi, he said, Moses said, let thy thummim and thy urim be with thy holy one. So we read, the holy one there is talking about the high priest. So you have Aaron, which was the high priest coming out of Egypt, and then eventually his son Phineas, and then their sons. One of the ways that they communicated with the Most High was uh, was called the Urim and, and the Thummim. And these rocks, or these, these, they would light up and kind of declare. So that's you know what the Urim and Thummim was. They had a, the, the holy, the, the high priest dealt with with that, whom thou didst prove see, with, at Massah, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. See. So Israel, the Levites too, they strove with what Moses and uh, at Massah Meribah. So, you know, it seemed like in that verse 8 there, whom thou didst prove, you know, that, that proven meaning like, because Israel provoked the Most High. So then it says, then it goes into a different instance here. Because Moses, like, uh, I believe this is like a, a song or, that he was singing. It might not have been. Was, I, I know it's Moses speaking. Um, Yeah, it was Moses speaking to Israel. So then it's verse 9, it says, it's all about the Levites, Levites, who said unto his father and mother, I have not seen him. Neither did he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children. So that's going back to, they didn't regard their own family above the Most High. If it came to their own son, their children, brethren, even what? Like it's saying here, who said to his father and his mother, I have not seen him. So that it's, it's like a figure of speech. Like the Most High's judgment had to go down where there was not a, yeah, that, they weren't like, well, this is my father, so I'll spare him. This is my mother, or this is my brother, this is my friend. They were like, no, you have to die. <laughs> now that might seem harsh, but when we go back to Exodus, they consecrated themselves as the priest in doing this and received a blessing. So it says, nor for they have what? Observed thy word and kept thy what? Covenant. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They, meaning the Levites, shall put incense before thee and whole burnt sacrifice upon thine altar. Bless the Lord his substance and accept the work of his hands. Smite through the loins of them that rise up against him and of them that hate him that they rise not again. So we see examples of Levi doing that, especially during the time of the Maccabees because they were of the tribe of Levi. And what happened when the Greeks rose up against us and the Most High through those men took our enemies down. They never rose up again. Nicanor, what happened? <laughs> but it's just showing you about the, the Levites here and, the, and, and that nine verse going into what went down in Exodus 32 where when they came to their own family they didn't show mercy you know they can't well this brother here off with his head but oh but this is my brother I, I'll let him live that's not righteous judgment so that's the way it went down. And in the flesh, we look at that. Oh, that's severe. That's harsh. I don't know about that. Most I bless the Levites for that. Just like when Phineas took out the guy with the javelin that was fornicating with that woman. Israel could have been, that ain't right, man. How you going to kill the guy like that? It's his life. See, that's this world. 
They're two consenting adults. Who are we to judge? Phineas like, yeah. Not that Israel said that foolishness. But he took the spear and... Well, that fornication is done. <laughs> and then to tell you that, that the most I love Phineas for what he did. Mattathias later on in the history, another Levite, did something similar when he took out the guy that was uh, promoting the idol for Israel to con conform to Greek idolatry. Mattathias took that guy out. And then it tells you that the way he did that was the same way Phineas took out the, the brother. I forgot his name. He was from the tribe of Simeon. I think his name was caused by. And so there are acts where men of the Lord rise up and 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 execute God's judgments for the law and they're held in high esteem in the eyes of God. So in Christ it's a different approach in the sense that it's more of a spiritual discernment and all right, you're not gonna get in the way of me serving the Lord. See, the Lord ain't commanding us that because Christ didn't come to destroy men's lives but to save them. Not that the Most High wasn't about salvation. He was. He, the Most High was merciful. But he's, Israel still had to pay because he's not a God that should be mocked. And man would have to sow, reap what he sowed. So let's go back to Exodus 32, right? So that's cold what the Levites did. You look at them, you're like, man, like, could I did something like that? You know, would I have been like, would I, would I have spared? Would have I, would I have concealed? Would have I consented? See? But reading this, we're like, wow, man, most high. Yeah, he's, when we say that we're on the Lord's side, the Lord going to prove us. And he did. The Levites, that is. Verse 28, 30, Exodus 32. And the children of Levi did according to the word. So, is this the Bible I'm reading here? Like, what? Man, I thought God is love. He is love. <laughs> he's, he's, a Lord, he's a man of war. He's a man of mercy. He's forgiving. He's long suffering. He's patient. And he also renders unto man according to his works. He's, you know, so. Knowing that he's a merciful God, we, we would not try his power. Not knowing he's a merciful God, let me tempt God. And if I get busted, I'll repent. And the Lord will have mercy on me. That's, that's the wrong, that's, this world's Christianity. So. Then it says, and the children of uh, verse 28, and the children of, of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. But Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his daughter, that he may bestow you upon you a blessing this day. So they would be blessed. They were blessed. They, so they, were, they consecrated themselves as the priests of the Most High in executing God's judgment. Amongst Israel, beginning with their own what family. You know that's the point of what's being said here. They were blessed for that. Not oh y'all, who told you I didn't tell you to do that? You angry on your own? Nah, <laughs> they, that was they were executing God's judgment because they, because of their rebelliousness. And it came to pass, pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people. Ye have sinned a great sin. That was not a light thing that Israel did. And now I will go up unto the Lord. Now I'm going to go up to the Most High. Peradventure, meaning perhaps I shall make an atonement for your sin. When he said that, that's heavy what he, what he said. Because the level of atonement that, you know, he was talking about, we're going to read about it. If it, if it, you know, if, if the Most High was willing, <laughs> and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, "Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold." 
Yet now, if thou forgive their sin, if not, blot me. I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. There's a book that's written that has all of God's people's names. Written in heaven. The Lord said, the, the Christ said in the book of Luke, the Most High got a, uh, that. He said, he told his believers that your names are written in heaven. In a book. Moses said, I'll take the hit. Block my name out of the book. Let, in other words, let me die for them. Let, let me be blotted out. Very similar to Paul when he said, that he had continual sorrow in his heart he for 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 the for the circumcision of let's matter what for matter of fact let's get there go to Romans 9 real quick that that should remind us of Paul see the, the love that the men of God had for Israel they the, the love they had was like the love that Christ had for Israel they were willing to die for Israel man that's how much they loved Israel. They were not covetous men. Romans 9 and 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were cursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. See, the reason why he's saying that, because the circumcision of Israel that he's speaking of, they were, many of them reject, were rejecting Christ. And they were in sin. Israel was in sin. So he, he himself wished that he, he could be accursed. Because remember, the scripture said, Cursed be he that hangeth on a tree. Meaning, <laughs> you hanged on a tree. You dead on that tree, that means you were cursed of God. Paul's like, I'll take the, uh, let me be a curse for, for the circumcision of Israel. That's that's his point. The Israel that knew, that's why I say, to whom pertaineth the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises. So he he himself being a man of the circumcision formerly, he could see, man, I could see how they resisting God I was there man you know, he was like man you know what so that they could be saved I wish I could be a curse for Christ for their sakes so we go back to uh, this verse here yet now uh, Exodus 32 32 Yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, see, and if not, blot me out. Blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Take, not, take my name out of the book that they may live. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So there, there was certain that what? They did their sin, Most High was going to blot. So in other words, no Moses. <laughs> you are not, you're not, your name's going to not be blotted out for them. Them that sin, I'm going to blot out their names out of the book. They're not going to be part of this book. They're not going to be part of the book. Because ultimately, who is the only one that could truly say these and behave in a manner where he could take upon himself the sins in, in the Christ. Christ? Right? That's in, um, hold this, right? Uh, First Peter.
Well, here's one, and then there's another one. Um, let's get this one first. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 18. First Peter chapter one verse eighteen. It says, For as much as ye know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold. So silver and gold money couldn't redeem us from from our sins. <laughs> Then he says, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. So what that's going into is the old covenant. It was vain in the sense that animal sacrifice for atonement of sins can never take away our sins. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, meaning a sacrificial lamb, without blemish and without spot. So we're redeemed through the blood of Christ. And he's being referred to as what? As a lamb, like John the Baptist declared him, to take away our sins. And he was without blemish or spot, see? The only one that could say, you know, to take the hit for Israel, would, he would have to be without what? Blemish. Moses was not without blemish. He was not perfect. Because the most I already had who in store to do that? Christ. Christ, let's prove it. Next verse. Who verily was ordained before the foundation of the world. So the most I already had a sacrifice in place. One that would take the hit for Israel. That Israel may live. There had to be one without what? Sin. But it was manifest in these last times unto you. That's Christ. So there's one more in, uh, in the um, epistles of Peter here. Where it says, it speaks about the just for the unjust. Let me see if I can find that one. Can I see your phone? It talks about Christ, the just, dying for the unjust. So it's uh, easier if I just uh, find it this way. Unless y'all brothers find it. Moses couldn't he he was not fit for that. Um first Peter three and um Yeah, first Peter three eighteen. Let's get that verse. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Christ died once on the cross for our sins. The just for the unjust. See? So who was the one that was foreordained before the world to die for Israel? Now Moses... The Lord, Jesus, the Son of God. That he might bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but what? Quicken, made alive through the Spirit. All right, one more. Let's go to Isaiah 53 and 4. Isaiah chapter 53 and 4. So it wouldn't be Moses, but the prophet like unto Moses. Isaiah 53 and 4 through 6. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did, we did esteem him stricken, 
smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are what healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man, every one to his own way. And the Lord, meaning the Most High, laid on him, meaning Christ, the iniquity of us all. See, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb, like we read in Peter. And as a sheep before his shearers his, is dumb, so he opened out his mouth. So this is all prophetic of Christ. Bearing our sins and our iniquities upon himself. And through his stripes we are what? Healed. See? Not Moses. Not the sacrifice of Moses. But the sacrifice of the Lord. Noble gesture on the part of Moses. But what? That, he, that, was, that, that was not the one that was foreordained. Christ was. To the most high. Like Abraham told Isaac. The Lord shall provide a lamb. <laughs> I said, where, where are we going to sacrifice? The Lord will provide the land. Because mm -hmm. the gospel was preached to Abraham. So, let's go back to um, Exodus 32. Blot out my name. Blot me out. I'll take the hit for Israel. But it had to be the just for the unjust. Without he that was without sin, Christ. So, Exodus 32. And verse uh, 33. And the Lord, uh, I'll read 232 again. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me. I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. And my angel, see, that be Christ, right? Starting with the Lord, shall go before thee. And nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon him. Because we all reap what we sow Sooner or later And the Lord plagued the people Because they made the calf Which Aaron made See The Most High plagued them And what? so what should that remind us of What it tell us in uh, Galatians chapter 6 and 7 Most I brought a plague in Israel as well. So, Galatians chapter 6. So, this is like, wow, humbling. And you would think after that, all right, you know what? That's it, man. <laughs> we need to stop being rebellious against the Most High. Remember, we read about, remember when the Lord sent the spies out and they came back with a evil report. And then the Most High said, all right, the ones you thought were going to die in the wilderness, the children, they're going to make it, you're going to die. And that happened after this. So, that's why we can't follow a worldly spirit. Even if it's among us, we, have, we, we can't partake. But rather what? Reproof. But rather reproof. That's what Joshua's doing. He's, he's reproving. He's not partaking. That's why he said what he said. So this is Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. So let us not be deceived. Or deceive ourselves. Because we can be deceived by others or we could deceive ourselves. God is not what? Man, we... Most I ain't going to say, look, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And then we do that and think that we're going to get over on the Most High. God is not a God that can be what? Mocked. 
He's not a God that we can sin against and like we can get over. You can fool man, right? You'd be like, you know, you play the trick and you got over on the guy, right? And you laughing and walking away. Ah, we got him good. Not the Most High. When the Most High gives us his word, his commandment, and we tempt and try the power of the Most High, and we sin against him, and think we're going to get away, the Most High is not a God that can be mocked like that. The Most High is not a God that we can make mockery of in that sense where we sin against him and think we're going to get over. Then it says, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Did he not say that to Moses? They which have sinned against me, I will blot out their name out of my book. So did the, the Most High had mercy with Israel in the sense that he didn't destroy, you know, Israel as a nation, but Israel, because of that was spirit that was there among them in that rebelliousness and sin that they did, it had to be purged. So the people had to be destroyed. Aaron. You know, the Moses prayed for Aaron. The Lord had mercy on him. But, you know, he had to bear that the rest of his life. You know? He had to bear that. Bear it in the sense that he did it. And that's, that was in his mind. Not bear it in the sense that, you know, Mosiah was going to destroy him for that. No, Mosiah did have mercy. Mosiah had mercy on whom he will have mercy and compassion upon whom he will have compassion. So then it says, For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So now it's going to explain. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap what? So we give into the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and we give into our lusts, and we fulfill those lusts, we're of the flesh going to be what? Corrupted. We're going to reap corruption. We reap, that's what they say. We reap what, in this world they call it karma. Oh, he had it coming to him. That's karma. Uh, karma is, I don't know, I think that's a, some type of Indian god or something like that. That's, that we don't have to say the words karma. What we ought to say is be on guard, you know, we don't reap what we sow. And when a man is suffering, we can't even say, well, for sure, you know, you don't know, you know. Remember, they had the, the man that was born blind. And the disciples were like, well, who did this? Who sinned? Like, him or, or his father, his parents, that he was born blind? The Lord said, neither did he sin nor his uh, father sin when he was born blind. He was blind so that the glory of God may be revealed in him seeing now, being healed. But we know we should always understand that if I give in to the flesh, I'm of, a re of the flesh. If I give in to anger, right? In my anger, most I said a furious man will perish in his anger. So there's a lot of scriptures against anger, scriptures against lust. So when we know better and we give in, where of the flesh going to reap corruption? It's like we're sowing seeds in the ground. You take a tomato seed and you plant it in the ground, right? And you cover it up and you water it, right? Well, that's us feeding into the flesh, nourishing in that, indulging in it, entertaining it. What's going to come forth? The byproduct of that sin. Just like you plant that tomato seed and you cover it and you water it, right? And nourish it. It's going to grow and it's going to bring forth plants, tomato plants. Well, you know, that's how we have to look at sin. If I give in to this lust, you know, the, what I'm coveting after, and I feed into it. The more I feed into it, the more I'm going to reap what? Corruption. Because once lust is conceived in our mind, right? And it gets going like this. The wheels are turning off. It bring it forth sense. And when it is finished, bring it forth death. That's what this scripture going into. 
So that shows us that that sowing to the flesh is feeding into the flesh. Then it says, and he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Like Joshua said, choose this day whom you will what serve. See, we have a choice to make. Sow to the spirit, sow to the flesh. Sow to the flesh or sow to the spirit. What is sowing to the spirit? Sowing to the spirit, applying ourselves, right? In the scriptures, applying ourselves in the teachings of our Lord. Because Christ said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. Remember he said, the flesh profited nothing, right? <laughs> the flesh profited nothing. Because he that sowed to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But Christ said, but he that sowed to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So when we're in the midst of temptation and trial, we got to have the mind of Christ and do what he did. What did Christ do? He stayed in the scriptures. He stayed in the commandments of God. So we got the commandments and the teachings of Christ to resist the devil. That's how we sow to the spirit. So that means we have to be knowledgeable of what? The word. So that when temptation and trials is present, we can go to the scriptures, quote them, communicate them, apply them, and by sowing to the spirit of that spirit, reap a life everlasting. Blessings leading to what? Everlasting life. When sowing to the flesh, it we become what? Corrupt. So that's powerful. Go to the Apocrypha, right? And uh, I think it's Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 in the Apocrypha and verse 1 do no evil so shall no harm come unto thee this were all karma good karma and bad karma yeah but karma that whole context of where they're coming from it, it, it's not in the context and sense of what the Most High speaks of. Because what's doing good in His eyes? Being faithful and obedient to Him. What's doing evil in God's eyes? Being unfaithful and disobedient to Him. Because when people in the world talk about karma and all that, they're not discerning whether people were keeping God's commandments and obeying them or not. So we have to understand from the mind of the Most High, the evil that he's talking about is what? Being, transgressing his word, tempting his power. Do no evil, shall, so shall no harm come unto thee. Because we know that if we do evil against God, against another person, that what? It's going to come back against us. Because we reap what we sow. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from thee. See? So sometimes it's our company that we got to depart from. And then the iniquity and the sin that we caught up in is turned away from us because what? We realize, you know what? I, I, so it's, we have to cut off people that's what? <laughs> They're about what? Partying, getting high, breaking this, all that stuff. Like... We got to let that world go. Verse 3. My son, sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness. And thou shalt not reap them, what? Sevenfold. So, so we reap what we sow, what? Sevenfold. So, what does it say? Sow not upon the furrows of unrighteousness. Don't walk a path to fulfill our lust in unrighteousness because we will reap what? What we sow. Sevenfold. That's the iniquity. And then we get that that it's the sin and then the iniquity. It's it's we we eating the byproduct of our doings. You know? We're eating 
we reaping what we sow, we're eating the byproduct, we're eating the fruit of our own doings, right? When Israel couldn't go to the promised land, right? They said, well, we'll go. We'll go. Yeah, we can go. To Moses said, don't go. You, you're rebelling against the Most High. They went anyway. What happened? They got destroyed by the nations in their land because the Most High wasn't with them. With being disobedient to the Most High, we eat of the fruit of our own doings. Even our own words, they, they were fearful that their children would die in the wilderness. Most I remember those words. No. Your children will make it to the promised land. You will not. We ate of the fruit of our own doings that came out of our mouth. What comes out of our mouth? Most I would make us eat those words. <laughs> See, so even what comes because what, what comes out of our mouth is what in our heart go to uh, Deuteronomy 32 Deuteronomy chapter 32 um the book of Deuteronomy 32 was it 33? Let me see. One where Moses said, Your sin will find you out. That's a cold scripture. Let's see if I can find that scripture. Moses said, Your sin will find you out. Deuteronomy 30, yeah, it was. Numbers 32. Oh, Numbers. Why did I say Deuteronomy? Numbers thank you, brother. 32, 32. Thank you, thank you, brother. I had Deuteronomy for some reason in my mind. Numbers 32. Thank you, brother. Numbers 32. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Now, check out this here. This is cold. Numbers 32. So we're in the book of Numbers. That's right before Deuteronomy. I'll wait for everybody to get it. This is Numbers 32, right? And verse... We'll read from... I'm going to read a couple of verses before so we get the context a little. I read from 28. So concerning them, Moses commanded Eleazar, the priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, Reuben will pass with you over Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you. Then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. So Gad and Reuben already had their land on the east of the Jordan. But they still had to go with their brothers on the other side of Jordan to help them get their land. 
So let's say, you know, you're the tribe of Gad and I'm Reuben. We, we have our land on this side. We can't be like, all right, well, look, we in our land, you know, peace and blessings, you know. <laughs> Most I be with y'all. Uh, we're going to enjoy our rest. Nah. Both sides, I know you're gonna help them fight too. <laughs> See, but if they were verse 30, but if they will not pass over with you on, they shall have. But if I'm sorry, verse 30, but if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. Wait a minute, am I in the right? Hold up, hold on one second. Numbers thirty. So, so where was that verse? Numbers thirty-two and what? About twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, I'm all all up ahead. Oh, good. I'm with you. Okay. Numbers yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, bear with me today. <laughs> um. So, thirty-two and what verse? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay. Here we go. So let me go down a few verses. Uh, let's go to verse 16. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. You know what? I'm going to read from the first verse so we can get the context. Uh, Numbers 32 and 1. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazar, Jazir, I'm sorry, and the land of Gilead, that behold the place was a place for cattle, the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses, and to Eleazar the priest, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, At the Roth, Debon, Jazir, Nimrah, Heshbon, Eli Elialah, Elialeh, and Shabam and Nebo and Baon, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for what? Cattle. And thy servants have cattle. See, so they're like, we got a lot of cattle, and this is a land for cattle. So they like, they eyeing the land. They're like, hey, this is good for for, for us. Then it says. Um, so I'll read the fifth verse. Wherefore they said, If we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for possession and bring us not over Jordan. So what are they saying? Let us get the land here because it's a land for cattle. We got much cattle. So in other words, let, let us get this land as an inheritance so we don't have to cross the Jordan River. So in other words, let us get our land here and we good. <laughs> so let's see what happens. This is all dealing we reap what we sow in, in a sense. You'll see why. So it says, and Moses, um, and Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, shall your brethren go to war and you shall sit here? <laughs> So your brethren go to war. They help you go to war here, right? They help you out here. So now y'all going to sit here and enjoy the fruit of the land while they fight? Moses ain't trying to hear that, is he? <laughs> That's unjust. That, this is righteous judgment. This is what a judge in Israel, he hear, discerns. What? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going into the land which the Lord hath given you? See? Because that would be discouraging. Where Gad and Reuben wasn't their mother. Because where what? Where? Ten tribes, one nation, or twelve tribes? <laughs> or, you know, so, I mean, the Levites, they were the priests, so you still had Dan. But my point is, where? Twelve tribes, one nation. Not ten tribes, one nation. <laughs> So imagine you went to battle on the east of the Jordan and conquered certain lands, destroyed the different kings on the east of the Jordan. Got now there's land there to be inhabited for the tribes. 
And then now you crossing the Jordan without them. That could be discouraging, right? That's like, I'm continuing and y'all too. Hey, no, nah, y'all. I, I need y'all too, right? <laughs> See? So then it says, Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. What did they do? Remember the other spies that came with Joshua and Caleb? What did they do? They discouraged Israel. So that would be discouraging for Gad and Reuben not to go with their brethren and fight. With them. Not sit there while they fight. Now tell us how it turned out. You know, then now they enjoying the fruit of the land. You know, eating a pear, fig, whatever, you know. Let us know how it goes. Nah, that's, Moses said, wait a minute. That's discouraging. For when they went up to the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. So it's like a comparison. They discouraged Israel for not going into the land. Now you're going to discourage your brethren by not fighting with them. They need you just like you needed them. See where Moses is coming from? We're, we're, we're a nation of, we're, we're brothers. <laughs> and the Lord's anger was kindled at the same time. And he swears saying, Surely none of them that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not, what? Wholly followed me. They have not fully followed me. So they weren't allowed to go. Remember we read that history? couple of weeks ago Moses bringing that history up y'all acting just like them and what's the point discouraging Israel because they need you you need them save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and the, the Kenizzite and Joshua the son of Nun for they have what holy follow the Lord Joshua Caleb they faithfully followed, fully followed the Lord, but those other men, they didn't. Josh, remember Joshua and Keller said, we can do this. We can fight them. We can do this, man. Let's go. The Lord be with us. We can take them out. The other guys came with the Europe. No. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. They got walled cities and they're protected. And so they're like, it, all, all the people started overreacting people crying children crying it was like a spirit of fear came upon the whole camp and what did them guys came with they discouraged the whole nation of Israel that's what Gad and Reuben would do if they wouldn't go fight with their brethren discourage Israel but not to do something to discourage Israel at least we yeah. Bear one another's burdens. Help help each other. They can't do it by it. They need Gad and Reuben. They're warriors too. Is that is that right? The other tribes helped. They conquered the kings and rulers of the, of the land on the east of the Jordan. And then Gad and Reuben say, oh, look, this is a good for cattle. Look how green the pastures are. And we got a lot of cattle. Moses, let us get this land. Let us, let us get the land. Right? So that we don't have to cross the Jordan. So. So. Is that right? What is Moses discerning? Y'all sit here. While they fight. You don't remember? How the spies came with an evil report and discouraged it. You're going to do the same thing. Because the point was about what? Discouraging them. See? So they ready to lay, you know, sit in the land, brothers fight. Nope. Moses like, nope. Verse 13. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness how many years? Forty years, man. For the days that they spied out the land, each day was going to be what? 
years. So for 40 years, Israel had a warning in the wilderness because those spies came back with an evil report. 12 men saw the same land. Two only had the faith to do it. So see, it shows you we can see the same things, but our behavior is, is, can be different. Because those men believed. The other men didn't believe in the Most High. That spirit can become infectious to everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, because we saw that when they came with the evil report, it said the whole congregation began to weep and cry. And Israel's heart was discouraged and melted. So much that they wanted to kill Moses and set up a new leader to bring him back to Egypt. And Joshua and Caleb, they would, it tells you they withstood the evil congregation. Tell us that in the Apocrypha. They withstood the evil congregation. Their rebellion. They were getting ready to stone Moses. So yeah, that spirit, yeah, would, would, it would spread like wildfire. And it did. So verse 13, And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel. And he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was what? Yes. Remember in Exodus, he said, in the day that I visit them, I'll visit their iniquity. Because the, the, some of them, that even after that, that they, that spirit, it was still in Israel. You would think after what went down, after the 3,000 men were killed in the plague, Right? Israel straight. Nope. This happened. And then at the end of the 40 years, what did Moses say? Years up to this day, you've been rebellious. It'd be that worldliness. It's hard to let go. A child can be raised in his faith. And that worldliness is in them. It's it's it could only be it it be through through the chastening of the Lord. Get us get it out of us. Humbled, being humbled. So then it says in verse um, thirteen again, and the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and made them wander in the wilderness forty years until the generation, to all that generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. So everybody that came out of Egypt that was 20 and up to that last person died, Israel wasn't going to go into the promised land. That's cold. That, that, that's, God is not mocked. What's for a man so? That shall he also reap. Verse 14. And behold, you are risen up in your father's stead an increase of sinful men. To argument yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. So now you and your father's stead. Now you provoking God to anger. What's that show us about ourselves? We, we don't learn, man. We don't be learning our lessons. Mosai humbles us and we refuse to be humble. Stiff-necked. Exactly, but we're stiff-necked people. This is the truth. <laughs> but we have, to, like Joshua said, incline our hearts unto the Lord, meaning circumcise your heart to the Lord. Moses even said in Deuteronomy 10, circumcise the foreskins of your hearts and be no more stiff-necked. So this is cold. For if you turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready, armed, before the children of Israel until we have brought them unto their place. See, now they're talking about we, right? <laughs> this is good now. They're saying what's right. And our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities 
because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his what? So we're not coming back to all the tribes, every man, the last household get their land. Imagine, that's cold too, man. Like, you know, like we get excited house shopping, right? <laughs> yeah, we, a little plot of land, you know, quarter of an acre. Oh my God. And we excited for that, right? You know, most our blessed little place to live. And imagine like, like, you know, wow. You know, like we would need binoculars. Like, whoa, my property line goes all the way over there. Whoa, wow. That's the kind of land that we got. All throughout the land, man, we had something that was beautiful. No matter the terrain, the geography, the landscape, water sources, water wells, rivers, and lakes, and streams, and seas. And it was a land flowing with milk and honey. <laughs> lots of vegetation, lots of cattle, fruitful land. So, so Israel got every man had inheritance. That's then, then, then they said, then okay, then we'll go back. For we will not inherit with them. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side, Jordan, or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. See. So they gonna get the land east of the Jordan. Their brothers get the land on the west side of the Jordan. And Moses said unto them, If you will do this thing, if you will go arm before the Lord to war. See? So Moses, I, like y'all saying, if you go arm before the Lord with your brethren, it will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he had driven out his enemies from before him and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be what? Blameless. Guiltless, blameless, right. Now you blameless. But if they stayed they didn't go, they would not be blameless, right? Let's say they stayed and their brothers went to war. All right, peace and blessings, right? Shalom, most high be with you. Then they're not what? Guiltless, they're guilty. And before Israel, and the land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will what? Find you out. Your sin will search you out. Eventually, you will reap what you what? So, right? Let's say they didn't go before with their brethren over the west on the other side of Jordan and fight with them, right? <coughs> and they chilling in the land. Now that's tempting God. Most I could bring destruction, swift destruction upon them. Because what? They didn't go with their brothers to fight. So that's what he's saying there. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. So eventually our sin will catch up to us. That's that Moses said, your sin will catch up to you. Sooner or later, you will reap what you sow. Your sin will find you out. Because God is not a God that can be mocked, right? And he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. If they stayed back while their brothers fought, they sow into what? The flesh. Because they want, they want to enjoy the fruits of the land before what? Their brothers. They got to fight. They, they helped you. You helped them. So they couldn't be selfish in that aspect that we'll stay here. But if they went armed, that's a bet. That's the most high with them. So I'll read that 23rd verse again. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. Build you cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep. And do that which hath proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commanded. See? So, the point of why I wanted to go here was when Moses said, that if you would not do so, meaning obey the Most High, your sin will what? Find you out. Meaning you're going to eat the fruit of your own doings. See, they would be sowing upon the furrows of unrighteousness. 
and we'll be the byproduct of that. Reaping what? Sevenfold. Sevenfold. Most I will bring destruction, a plague, have a nation come up, rise against them, and destroy them. So that show us that when it comes to sin, our sin will search us out. When Joseph's brethren were in uh, were in Egypt, and they didn't know it was Joseph, he had them like kind of quarantined, and he was going to deal with them. They said among themselves, oh, our sin caught up with us, like so to speak. They were like, because the remember they sold Joseph into captivity. So they kind of sensed that the Mosai is visiting us <laughs> for what we've done. Because Israel understood that we reap what we sow in life. We understood when you do good, good happens. When you do evil, evil comes back. We understood that. Not in a sense of like idolatry, but in a sense of that. You know, when we are faithful and obedient to God and we tremble at his word and we're faithful and obedient and we and do good for the Father, we do good for one another, it comes back. It comes back. Good deeds don't go unpaid, you know, in the eyes of the Lord. We, you know, we reap what we sow. Said the bit Moses warning the people about that. So... You know, so that's um, pretty much, you know, all that. You know, we're finishing that Exodus 32. <clears throat> Unless uh, uh, y'all had uh, like a, a question or any scriptures that you wanted to add to that. You know, we kind of finished uh, with that part in 1 Corinthians 10. So we can um, just refresh ourselves real quick. I'll just read the verse. 1 Corinthians 10 and 7. So we read all that history. So we read from Exodus 30. We read the whole chapter. All praise. We went through that. We also went to earlier in the chapter where Moses commanded the elders to deal with Aaron. You know, if a matter came up <clears throat> and they were told to wait till they came back. They didn't listen. All hell broke loose, so to speak. So 1 Corinthians 10 and 7 says, Neither be idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to what? Play. So we, we read that in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 6. Israel committed idolatry. What was the temptation present among the Corinthians? Israelites living in Corinth for them to commit similar idolatry. And then incorporate that idolatry that was present there during the Roman Empire in the church. And then serve God and fulfill our lusts and be worldly. Do the Lord's communion. And what are we doing? Eating and drinking damnation to ourselves. That's why the Lord said, for this cause there are many weak and sickly among you and many die, many sleep. So this had to be purged out from among the church verse 8 says neither let us commit fornication as some have then committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand so most I will that's what we're going to get into next as we continue here in 1st Corinthians 10 because remember, we start at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea. So we read that history. So now we're just continuing in uh, 1 Corinthians 10, where now it spoke, uh, it's going into idolatry. That go back into the book, the history back in Numbers. So we go into that history, we can see, all right, how did this man, 23,000 died in one day? What happened? We're going to read about it. To the intent and purpose that what? We don't commit fornication. Because what did Paul say? Let us not commit fornication. Why is he saying that? Because the temptation is there for us to commit fornication. And then bring that spirit into the fellowship. And then, what is that? Dangerous. Because now we're having feasts. 
and we break in bread and we're mixing idolatry. That is not the Lord's communion. <laughs> Just like that is not a feast unto the Lord. Remember Aaron said, let, let us proclaim a feast unto that is not a feast unto the Lord. That's idolatry. Well, same thing like Paul brought out First Corinthians eleven. When we doing the communion and we're bringing in the sinfulness of the world into it, that's that's no law. That's not the communion of me. Just like that feast unto the Lord, that was no feast unto the Lord. Don't put the Most High's name in there. That's a, the Most High said, "That shall not take His name in vain." Don't put the Most High's lie in your lie. In falsehood, don't use the Most High's name in falsehood. That's what I mean by "Thou shalt not take the name of God in vain." Don't put the Most High's name, His word, His doctrine, into our worldliness. The Most High will now guilt, hold him guiltless that take it His name what in vain. I don't say it does save the Lord. The Lord ain't said that. Don't say this is a feast unto the Lord and the Most High said no, not according to my word. So, any questions or uh, on, on what we read? Any scriptures to add to that? So all praise to the Most High in Christ. Because although we read, a, you know, a lot of the sinfulness, but what's encouraging is what when we read about Joshua and what Caleb, right? So that's where we get the inspiration from, right? They have what wholly followed me. So we can be like, yeah, all right. I see what I got to do. I got to hold it down like Joshua it did, right? And Caleb. Because the most I said about Joshua, they had, that he had wholly followed. And then after Moses died and they end up laying the promise, what did Joshua still what? Holding it down. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. So we read this, you know, we can take it as bad news or good news. We can look at it oh, like, uh, not that anybody's doing that, but I'm saying there's, that'd be a spirit where we can be discouraged at something that, wait a minute, this is this is good news. This, this ain't bad news. This is, it, 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 Paul is going in this, this is good to hear this. Like, we need to hear this. The Corinthians needed to hear not to commit idolatry, not to, he, not to commit fornication, because that temptation was there. So, for the righteous, it's like medicine, right? It's medicine, food for the soul. For the evil, ah, oh, this is bad news. This is the bad news prophet here. You know, that's what Ahab said about Elijah. Ah, the bad news prophet. Every time, like, he got, what do we do wrong this time, right? <laughs> what did Moses say? He says, we came out of Egypt, unto this day you have rebelled against the Lord. But there's, we can always see that there was always a remnant that what holy follow the Lord, and that's where we're like, yeah, I like that guy Caleb, man. I like that guy Joshua, man. I look up to those guys. When you read in Ecclesiastes, it speaks about. Uh, let's just get this point real quick. Most I call them famous men. Real quick, it's just a verse or two. Um, Joshua, uh, Joshua, uh, please ask us 46 and 1. In the proper, please ask us 46 and 1. I'm just gonna get one or two verses real quick and wrap it up. So, please ask us 46 and 1. So, it says, Jesus or Joshua, the son of Nave, was valiant in the wars and was successor of Moses and prophecies, who according to his name, meaning in accordance to his name, which means Savior, was made great for the saving of the elect of God. Okay. So he lived up to his what? His name. That, that's a fitting name for that brother, because he saved the elect of God from the enemies. And taking vengeance on the enemies... That rose up against them, that Israel, that he, meaning Joshua, might 
set Israel in their what? Inheritance. From a slave to an, to an Egypt to inherit the promised land. Only two guys that came out of Egypt that was 20 and up experienced that. So when that man speaks, we should what? Listen. <laughs> Now, verse 7. In the time of Moses, also he did a work of what? Mercy. He did a work that brought mercy. He and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, in that they withstood the congregation and withheld the people from what? Sin. And appeased the wicked murmuring. They shut that down. Because if they didn't step in, what would have happened? They would have put Moses to death, set up a new leader that's bringing them not to the promised land, but what? Pharaoh, please, please accept us back. Here, put the chains back on me. I'll be a slave. <laughs> that's, that's what Israel... Remember, it told accent, they want to go back to Egypt. Because they despise the promised land. So, Israel, man, we... We'd be out of whack sometimes. <laughs> so it says, And of 600,000 people on foot, they too were preserved to bring them into the heritage, even the land that what? Flow of milk and honey. So out of 600,000 men that were counted, two out of 600,000 made it to the promised land that came out of Egypt. That was 20 and up. Don't the scriptures tell us in the book of Peter that the righteous shall scarcely be saved? Because we see how this world, people are engrossed in wickedness. And when the Most High bring judgment, although a lot of people are dying and going to die, you're going to see, man, we're going to sit no. And look, if we don't fear God and keep his commandments, we're open target, man. Like, we got to be on the Lord's side. We got to be on the Lord's side. So, the Lord gave strength also unto Caleb, which remained with him unto his what? Old age, so that he entered upon the high places of the land, and his seed obtained it for a heritage, that all the children of Israel might know, I mean, that all the children of Israel might see that it is good to what? Because Joshua and Caleb wholly followed the Lord. So, that's the point, right? Remember the point was being made about we can learn from Joshua and Caleb? What can we learn from Joshua and Caleb? It's telling us in verse 19 that all the children of Israel might see that it's good to follow the Lord. That's the inspiration, right? So we shouldn't be... Like I said, I'm not saying we're doing that, but I'm just saying Israel is a people. We should be like... You know, in our spirit. Damn. Okay. Ooh, man, that's cold. 3,000 people died. Most high brought a plague. But men like Joshua and Caleb were holding it down, though. Let's see. And it's concerning the judges, because in this world, we not to what? Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> but there were judges the Lord raised up. Everyone by his name. See? Most I raised up judges. Whose heart went not a whoring, nor departed from the Lord. Let their memory be blessed. Because when they judged, they judged righteous judgment. They didn't judge like the Lord said. Condemn Israel for a sin that they promoted. <laughs> or that they committed. So, when you go back, because that's Ecclesiastes 46, when it tells us in Ecclesiastes 44 and 1, read what it says here. Ecclesiastes 44 and 1. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begot us. So, Joshua and Caleb are what? Famous men. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power, 
from the beginning, such as did bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies, leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meet for the people wise and eloquent in their instructions, such as sought out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. I mean, I had musicians, prophets, warriors. David was both. He was a warrior and a har he was a harpist, man. He played the harp so good that Saul had these evil spirits on him. The, the brother playing the harp and the evil spirits departed from him. That show you the power of music. Music on the left hand side and it's in, in this record industry, they do rituals over records and do prayers and seances and things like that so that the people that listen to this music get influenced by it. Mm. They do that stuff. But on the other side, the right side, man, music could be uplifting, calm and peaceful. You know, very fulfilling, inspiring. So then it just goes on to a list of, of these famous people. Joshua and Caleb was one of them. Moses, Aaron's mentioned in this roster. And these men, they always had what? Wives. That was one flesh with them. Sons and daughters that was right with them. Did they have struggles in that? Hell yeah. <laughs> Part of my language, you know, uh, the men they had to deal with issues at home. Jacob had to tell us, hey man, put away these little gods. What's going on here? He, I think even his wife, a little idol, she had to get rid of. So. It's, it's, it's on top of stay on top don't look over things don't sleep on things don't turn a blind eye don't consent don't agree when things is not right stay on top of it stay on top of ourselves first and foremost so yeah so Joshua and Caleb what can we learn from those brothers that it's good to fully follow the Lord. From day one to the day we out of here. Stay in these scriptures. That's what we learn from this. So it doesn't become a negative, bad news thing. It's a good news thing. Because the most I always win in the end. Most I always, most I said I have reserved. He told Elijah. Elijah thought he was the only prophet left. Ahab's wife, Jezebel, she had all the prophets of the Lord. Prophets of the Lord being killed. Elijah thought he was the last one. Most are like, I have 7,000 men that have not bowed down to Baal. I have reserved, you don't even, he, Elijah didn't even know who they were. 7,000. He said, I'm left alone. Really? I got 7,000 more. <laughs> so there's always a righteous remnant. So we're not fighting this fight alone. Mm -hmm. These afflictions are being accomplished amongst our brethren in the world. Tell us that in the book of Peter. So we got to endure though. When we fall, Humble ourselves, shake ourselves from the dust, repent, get back on track. Our praises to the Most High in Christ. So we'll end it there. So let's do the uh, prayer and communion. <coughs> Psalm 2 and 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break their bands asunder and cast their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. 
Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and he perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. All praises to the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that sitteth on the right hand of the Father. Bless us with the Spirit to endure faithfully in the keeping of your word and your commandments that we may guard them with our life, with all the love that's in us. And we pray for the sick and infirm brothers and sisters and children of Israel. We pray for their mercy. We also pray that you show us the way where we may have erred from the faith so that we can repent from our sins and be healed from our uh, infirmities and sicknesses as well. Thank you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Amen. Amen. So, let's do the communion. So I'll read the uh, scripture. And as, <clears throat> and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is a commandment that the Lord gave his disciples that we're to do often. Okay? So this is something that we do like it says in Acts 2, daily. So we should break bread daily because <coughs> we live unto Christ daily. We live in Christ daily. Christ said we have to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood or else there is no life in us. So he gave us an ordinance that's symbolic of that. The bread and wine, which is symbolic of his body. The wine, symbolic of his blood that was shed on this day that he gave this ordinance to his disciples during the preparation of the Passover. So when we eat this bread and drink this wine, we have to do it in a way that's worthy. Meaning, continuing to live and abide in Christ. So, let's do the prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bless our bread and wine, which represents the body and blood of the Lord. This we do in remembrance of you until you come. Thank you, Father in Christ. Amen. Amen. So peace and blessings to everyone on the um, uh, Facebook uh, live. Peace and blessings to your homes. Uh, peace and blessings, Jessica. Oh, Most High in Christ, bless you, sister. Blessings to your home. Brother Phil, bless Sabbath, brother. Most High in Christ, bless you, brother. Tashe, peace and blessings to you. Most High in Christ, bless you. Sister Hadassah, Most High in Christ, bless you, sister. Family out in Trini. Uh, sister Teresa, Most High in Christ, bless you and your home, sister. Bless Sabbath. Uh, Brother Jaquez out in South Africa. Peace and blessings to your home, brother. Gabar out in Jacksonville. Myra out in LA. Peace and blessings to you. Gabar out in ja yeah, Jacksonville. Uh, if I miss somebody else. Dean Phillips, what's up, brother? Peace and blessings. Our brother out in Trinidad, listening in on the Bible study. All praises, brother.
Stay strong, brothers. Beloved of the Lord, you and the sis, stay together in these scriptures, brother. Thank you, Lord. Nor will we fellowship one day, brother. This side or the next side? <laughs> all right. Yep, that's all we had on our end. Lou, you want to say what's up to any brothers and sisters? Real quick. Real quick. All right, brother Lou. Win. Mosan Christ bless you, Israel. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for chilling with us today. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Peace and blessings to your homes. Shalom. There you go. Brother Lou. All right. So that's it. That's all we had, man. All praises. Most high Christ bless you all. Stay strong. Stay humble. Faithful. Pray for one another. Let's keep enduring. <laughs> no, we got a lot to endure, man. Personal battles. Temptations. Trust. Thank you, brother. Uh, so let's let's stay in these scriptures. Simplify everything. Yeah. All right, Israel. Most high Christ bless you. All right. Peace and blessings, everyone. Brother I bide you. Most high Christ bless you, brother. Peace and bless to the Houston Church. Houston Fellowship. Yeah. Your household. Jesse. Earl. Uh, if, it, if I you know, forgot any other brother's household. Sorry about that. Alright. Stay strong out there in Houston, brother. Peace and blessings. I sent him a picture of her. Yeah, I got it in my car. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, then. All right, Baja. Peace and blessings, brother. All right, everyone. Most high Christ bless y'all. Peace and blessings. I got some cornbread here, too.